So the question that I'm going to be starting with today is question number six on paper number one, which is all about the Doppler effect. The question says, the siren of a train moving at a constant speed along a straight horizontal track emits sound with a constant frequency. A detector placed next to the track records the frequency of the sound waves. The results obtained are shown in the graph. Now it's crucial to look at the word constant speed. So the train does, the speed does not change of the train and it emits a constant frequency, which makes sense. As the train is moving towards the person, the person or the detector detects a very high frequency. As the train passes away, the frequency then gets less. Remember, in Doppler effect, when a train moves towards, it will sound louder, and once it has passed, it will sound softer. So that's the change in frequency. Question 6.1 says we need to state the Doppler effect in words. Remember, if you have to give a definition or state, it must be exactly the same. The Doppler effect, it is a change in frequency or pitch of the sound detected by a listener due to the relative motion between the sound source, between the sound source. So the Doppler effect is a change in frequency or pitch of the sound detected by a listener due to the relative motion between the sound source as well as the listener. The second question says, does the detector record the frequency of 3148 or 3148 hertz when the train moves towards the detector or away from the detector? So that's the number in question. Now remember, how do I know this? If you have a train or an ambulance and if you close your eyes and the sound sounds louder and louder and louder, it means it's moving towards you. Once the sound goes soft and soft and soft, it means that it has actually passed you. So looking at this graph here, 3148 is a greater frequency than 2073, which means that the 3148 represents the train moving towards. So 6.2 says towards. Let's look at our next question. 6.3 says we must calculate the speed of the train. Take the speed of sound in the air as 340 meters per second. Looking at the diagram here, I'm only giving the frequency that is detected by the detector as well as time, whereas the frequency emitted by the sound source and the v velocity of the sound source is unknown, which means that could be, this must be a simultaneous equation. So for 6.3 rather, I'm going to do three equations. I'm gonna do one where it's moving towards. So that's, uh, that's where I'm gonna get my first equation. My formula, which you get on the formula sheet, remember it must be a capital L. I'm going to say V. If it moves towards, I must get a very small denominator. I use a negative. I'm going to use a positive at the bottom. A negative at the bottom, a positive at the top. I'm going to say Vs. Vs, this one is Vl. The velocity of the listener multiplied by the frequency of the sound source. Velocity in the air, speed of sound in the air is 340. It will also be 340 on this side. The detector is standing still, so Vl is zero. However, I do not know what the constant velocity of the train is. I also don't know what is the constant frequency emitted by the sound source. And that then will be Vs. When it was moving towards, we were told that or on the graph, I identify that it's 3,148. Um, now, I need to make f of s the subject of the formula because it remains constant. 
I'm going to have 3148 is equal. Remember, this is over 1. Numerator times numerator will give me 340 f of s all over 340 minus vs. This is over 1, a fraction, and a whole number. I need to cross multiply. I'm going to have 340 f of s. And I'm going to multiply all this. Let me not skip steps. I'm going to have 3148. And I need to multiply in with 340 minus vs. I'm going to have 340 on this side, which is f of s. I'm going to multiply in. 3148 multiplied by 340 gives me a very, very long number which is 107, there we are, so that's 1070320 minus 3148 minus VS, multiplied by VS will give me 3148 VS. So this is equation number one. Now I'm going to see what happens when it moves away. I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to keep F of S as a constant because the frequency emitted by the train did not change. I'm going to have F of R, remember it is a capital letter, the velocity of sound in the air. Now as we move away, I must use a positive sign here, I'm going to use a negative sign there. This is the velocity of the detector. Velocity of sound in the air, I've got F of S, velocity of the sound source, and the frequency emitted by the sound source. The frequency detected by the detector as it moved away was 2073. The speed of sound in the air was 340. Remember, the detector is not moving, so that is zero. Speed of sound in the air is 340 plus Vs in this equation, multiplied by F of S since the frequency emitted by the train was constant. This is over one. I'm gonna keep this as 273. Numerator times numerator will give me 340 F of S all over 340 plus Vs. This is over 1. A fraction and a whole number, I'm going to cross multiply. On this side, I'm going to have 340 F of S is equal to 2073, which I need to multiply with 340 plus Vs. On this side, I'm going to have 340 F of S. I'm going to multiply that in. Just get my calculator. So on this side, I'm going to have 2073. Multiply that by 340. I'm going to get 704820. So I get 704820 plus Vs. This is my equation two. Now I want you to see something. I've got 340 F of S on this side. I also have 340 F of S on that side, so that is a constant. So what am I going to do? I'm going to equate equation 1 equal to equation 2. I'm going to write all of this as equation 1, and then all of that as equation 2 equal to each other. In equation 1, I've got 107320. Mm, let me just erase that so I can have more space. Let me move it closer. I'm going to have 1070320 minus 3148VS all equal to 704820 plus, and here I forgot to multiply in, that's why I only have one standing number, and here I'm going to have 2073VS. There we are. Don't be, a, don't be silly like me. 203VS. There we are. That makes more sense. Now I'm going to have 2073 VS. Now, remember mathematics, I'm going to have all my like terms in one side and all my unlike terms on the other side. So what I'm going to do, I can either take the numbers on this side and VS on this side, but I'm just I'm going to remove, keep my VSs on this side. It's negative 3148 VS. This number is going to jump the equation sign to be a negative which is 2073 VS equal to 704820. If it jumps the equation sign, the sign changes. 
0.070320. So now let's work that out. So I'm going to have negative 3148. I'm going to subtract 2073. And I get negative 5221. Negative 5221. Remember my unit, it's VS. Let's work on the other one. And on that side, I'm going to have 704820. I'm going to subtract 1070320. And then I get a very big number, 365. There we are. So that is 365500 when I subtract the two from each other. Just double check. It is a negative. So I'm going to keep my negative there. Now, I need to get Vs by itself. I'm going to divide both sides with the number bothering the Vs, which is negative 5, 2, 2, 1. What you do on the one side, you have to do on the other side. That's 2, 2, 1. 5, 2, 2, 1 divided by 5, 2, 2, 1 is 1. 1 times Vs will be Vs. I'm going to put that as it is in my calculator. So at the top, I've got a negative 3, 6, 5, 5, 0. I need to divide it by a negative 5, 2, 2, 1. And therefore, I get, I get seven. Let me just see, I'm missing a zero on the top part. So I've got three, six, five, five, two zeros. There we are. And then that is negative five, two, two, one. That looks much more better. Therefore, I get negative 70. A negative divided by a negative is a zero. So this negative and this negative will give me a positive. So I have 70. So remember, two decimal places. So I'm going to get 70 meters per second to the exponent, negative 1. So that is then how I would have done the simultaneous equation. Let's look at our other question. Question number 6.4 says, the detector started rec recording the frequency of the moving train siren when the train was 350 meters away. Calculate the time indicated on the graph. And this is the time that they're talking about. When we've got distance, we've got time, we can therefore bring equations of motion. Let me add a slide there. Therefore, so this is 6.4. I can say V is equal to delta X, remember your formula, over to the change in time. We just calculated the velocity of the train, which was 70 meters per second. They told me that the detector started detecting when the train was 350 meters away, and I need to look for the time. I've got a fraction, I've got a whole number, we put this over one, and then we therefore cross multiply. One times 350 will give me 350. 70 times delta t will give me 70 delta t. If I want delta t by itself, I'm gonna divide both sides with what's bothering the delta t. So I'm going to divide both sides by 70. 70 and 70 will cancel, leaving me with delta t. Let's see what we get for that one. Put it exactly as it is in your calculator. 350 over 70, then gives me a time of five seconds. And always remember your SI units. And that is then the last question that we have for the Doppler effect. Hopefully it's made more sense and it's making, giving you a bit more clarity.